Thank you very much. Welcome to World Class Education. Today we're going to talk about the ministry of things around us. So many things tell us so many uh, issues and subjects without us knowing. And today we thought, okay, we're going to talk about the ministry of things around us. So with me here I've got students, parents, great people, businessmen, and I'm hoping to make sure that I deliver the best knowledge or teaching that everybody can learn from this meeting. So if you're watching me from Canada, United States, Africa, any part of this world, get a pen and a paper and follow us right now. Thank you. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the ministry of things around us. Okay? The ministry of what? Things around us. There are so many things that minister to us. They tell us what to do without us knowing what has given us those suggestions. Okay? Without knowing who gave us the suggestions. We come from different environments, places. Maybe we didn't take ourselves there because our parents moved in those places and then we found ourselves there. We live there. Okay. And because you live in that street or that city or that town or that state, you have no choice, is it, but to adapt to that environment. But what happens is, if the environment is not good, it has its own special ministry, that environment. The environment has what? Its own what? Special ministry. The people we meet every day, these people have also their own special ministry. The things we watch on TV, what we see on television, they have a special ministry. They tell us something. They minister to us something. You understand? Now, what they minister to us, we may not choose that by ourselves. Say, okay, I want to learn this, or I want to hear this. But then, we just found it right there. And by finding it there, we're distracted. Maybe you're on the phone, and you want to do something else, and then all of a sudden, something pops up on your phone, like TikTok, or YouTube, or Facebook video, and then all of a sudden, your attention is grabbed, and you're gone there. Then you forgot what you were doing there in the first place. And then that video begins to minister to you. Do you understand? So these are ministries of things around us. They could be positive or negative. Now these things that minister to us, they make us great people. And they make us poor people at the same time. Because we didn't choose. Somebody say that the mangoes or the oranges that fall from a tree by themselves are not always the best. Is it? But the ones we choose, okay, I'm going to get that one, you go get it yourself. They are the best. You understand? That's a part of the ministry. Now, this ministry is brought to us also by the quality of people's personalities. What did I say? By the quality of people's what? Personalities. Now, we all have a personality, a character, a behavior, what we do, our qualities, is it? That quality is given to us by the investments that we have made ourselves. Like you go to school, you study, you do what and what you graduate. That's an investment in your personality. That gives you a certain what? Quality. Are you with me? It gives you quality because you've added value to yourself by getting information. Now the information you got gave you quality, gave you value. And you are a different person when you are acknowledged to yourself. You're not the same person. So, if 
the people that you meet always are of a low standard. They can only minister to you what they are. You see that? You find a man just believes in a lower quality of life. That's what he believes. A lower standard of life is what that man believes. You tell him, okay, we are moving into this country or this city. Inside the city or that county, there are so many states. This man knows the exact state he's going to live in. He says, no, I'm going to live in this area. A terrible area. Because he grew up from such areas. Are you with me? So now, he has his own ministry. Something toward, tells him always, this is who you are. You are not this kind of a man. This is who you are. A lady goes to school, she graduates on top of her class. Beautiful young girl. But look at her lifestyle. Just how hard, how difficult her life is. Why? She has that ministry. Do you understand that? She has that quality. How many have seen a family that has been poor for 40 years, 50 years, just in poverty? And now the grandmother was living into, in that house, left by her son, who passed on, or her son, who's now a drunk, who lost his job, and the neighbors have been building, taking land from her plot, cutting it. Now she's the only one, a small area. How many have seen such things? So a grandma lives here. The neighbor here took land. She couldn't do anything. Yeah, the neighbor over there took land. She couldn't speak. The neighbors, whenever they want to put a wall fence, they'll get into her land and build. The other one to get into her land and build. Now she was a small place. And yet when they, when they were giving out spaces or land in that area, they measured equal. But this grandmother has something small. A result of poverty. The family has been poor throughout. And this grandmother takes care of many people, yet she doesn't work. He said there was something in the street. Poverty is continued because of things that minister to us. These things, they minister to us a life. Do you understand what I'm telling you? So you have papers, but no job. How is that possible? It shouldn't be like that. That you, are, you graduated, but you're jobless. It was not designed to be so. Do you understand? But we find that a lot of times. People graduated, okay, went to school, but they're so poor. They're suffering. Now, let me show you now something that will help you a great deal. How to deal with these negative Ministrations, even positive ministrations that you have not selected or chosen. Okay? You meet a lady for the first time. Hi, how you doing? She walks to you. Her ministry has started right there. She's ministering to you already. She didn't have to say any word. She just comes to you, talks to you. She starts her ministry. It starts working. You, you, you have now those thoughts. You're thinking, who is she? What type of a woman is this? You have now an expression about this woman already. You hear me? You have an expression. You have an idea. Now, why are you thinking a lot about this person you've just met? It's because she's ministering to her presence there has a ministry to you. I meet people the first time, they say, hey, hello. I know that by talking to this person right now, I am also active. You hear me? 
He's trying to process this man who I am. He's thinking hard, who is this man? He talks great. Ah, wow. Where is he from? She's processing. As she's processing, that's the ministry I am giving to her. Now, it won't be long before she's helped positively or negatively. It will happen right there. You hear me? So if you know that your journey of life should be like this, choose the type of people to minister to you. Choose. Do you understand? The type of people, the type of things around you. If you want to talk about success and prosperity, you must choose that. This means that everything around you must be successful, beautiful, a form of riches, a form of prosperity, everything. You hear me? Everything. It must be like that. Why? Because this is the ministry that you have chosen. There are people who cannot live in a shanty area. Even though they have no money, they can just live there. You say, it's better I go, I beg a friend, I stay with a friend, I squat in that state, not in that area. Why? You're so conscious about the environment, the power, and the influence that will come from that environment. I was 18 years old. I said, I will never leave in a shanty area. Never. I made up my mind. I said, never. Why? Because I heard a man teach many years ago. He said, the environment can destroy your creativity. Dr. Miles Monroe, the late, he died in a plane crash. He said, the environment, many years ago, the environment can destroy your creativity. I was just a young boy. I didn't have to test it to know it's true. No. I just heard it immediately, no more. See that? I'm going up only expensive places. I don't have money for that. I will find ways to squat. To go and live in a dirty area because it's my standard, my situation now. I refuse that. Because you, um, my standard is not according to what I have now. It's in my mind. See so, huh? In my mind. And I kept on like that. People say, oh, humble yourself. I said, I am. I can't stay there. Not even for a night, I can't stay there. See that? Because so many things will minister evil. Debt, poverty to you. One single day that your life will change forever. You will pass in this year. This child will insult a horrible, vulgar language. Whoops. You pass inside the family, wife and husband are fighting. Oh, what kind of hell is this? Music is playing loud, you terrible songs. What's going on here? And that's the place where you live every day, okay? You live every day. You know, I went to a certain place. Oh, one, one day I was driving, and it was in the evening. So I was dropping this person, sitting young man. He said, I leave you past this side. I said, okay, let's go. He said, I was driving him past this side. I said, the car can pass it. No, it can. Just pass. Oops. Are you sure? Yes. I passed there the flowers. I drove like that. His house, there was a bar behind his house. A club-like. And I asked him, does this club play until this time? He said, all night. I said, you live here? I said, yes. How do you sleep? No, I'm amused. How can he be a normal person? How can this gentleman be a normal human being? Terrible ministries. Ministering to him. Songs. Terrible songs. Evil songs. Songs have a ministry. You hear a song. I don't. There are songs. I don't listen. If I, if if you with me, you hear my songs. You say I'm boring. 
terrible songs. I'm not mentioning names of people. But you find terrible songs and people just listening. Songs about love. Everything is about love and the word. So you find that the young men, you see, the youths now, have this mindset of falling in love every time. They want to fall in love and get up and fall again and get up. On and on. Because of these terrible ministries that we have around us. Things that destroy our economies. Things that destroy our lives. And you find families remain poor for 40 years, 50 years, the family is poor. Do you know, let me tell you something. There are tribes that were wiped out because of poverty. Tribes were wiped out in this country. In this country. Because of poverty. From generation to generation, some tribes disappeared. I can show you. In some tribes, you stopped hearing them. I'll give an example. For example, just an example, like a name Goma. All right. After generation to generation, you find you stopped hearing that name Goma anymore. And the young men who are born now, they've never heard it. But only elderly people would know that there was a Goma. This is a tribe of these people. But because of poverty, it's gone. The family disappeared. Those who were picked by the uncle to be raised by a rich uncle somewhere from a neighbor, they inherited a name and a side name of another man as a child. The child was Goma. He became Duma. <laughs> I'm serious. All of a sudden, he became a Zulu. Okay? What about his own tribe? Gone. His own family? Gone. Things that minister to us. And when we suffer too much, our spirits, our personalities, our, our beings, our cells, there's a cry inside of liberty. You just want freedom. But you're not saying with your mouth, say, I want freedom. But you're burning inside, you want freedom. All right? You want freedom. And then you see a man walks to your house, all right, driving. And this young girl is right there in her sleepers, in her poverty, with a poor family. This guy walks, hi, how you doing? You live here? Yes, I do. And then she feels, because now this guy has come with riches. Remember? That ministry of riches. The guy is driving big, looks great. He has his own special ministry. So, already you know what type of a man this is. Right? We, we have that knowledge ourselves to know. We can know this guy is, is good. We can assume he's like this. Ourselves, we can read a person. Is it? Well, we have that ability, right? Every person. To read a person. This person is, is success. It looks great. We can, you know, have a picture. Now, this guy comes and he looks perfect. He looks wonderful. In your eyes, and you're right there as a lady. And because you'll be so poor, all you want is freedom. Now, him, he has a minister of riches, but maybe he has an infirmity in his body, an infection in his body. Yet, he has something beautiful, which is riches, the golden life. That's what I call it. Golden life. All right? He has it. But then also, he has a problem. He's sick in his body. But the lady will not see it. Because she's been crying for freedom, liberation. So anybody who comes in to take her out of that poverty, she said, it's fine. That's the problem when you suffer too much. You go, even when this person has an infirmity in his body, you'll say, it's okay to smile him. Even to find out or to ask, are you okay? It's, you don't want to talk about it. She goes just like that. And she meets this man and marries him. Years down the line, she was the only hope of the family as they thought. But now, they have to look after her again. You understand that? It's a problem. The greatest enemy we have today is poverty. And when it comes, you will not see it. 
poverty. But like I told you, since you know the ministry, I just told you of things around you, the ministry, your friends, the chair, a chair can minister to you. Believe it or not, a chair, a common phone can minister to you. Do you understand me? All these things can tell you something. Because we, though we are made, we know how to read everything. Because of that, we can interpret everything. And that's a ministry. That becomes our lives. Now look at this. If we are able to do that, it means, this means that we have power to control it. Is it? We do have power to control it. Because we can see it. You understand me? We can see it. If I can see it, I have power to control it. If I can see it, power, I have it. Is it? And it starts today. You're going to become very successful. If you must become successful. If you should become successful. Believe it or not, learn to see these ministries, identify them, and block them when you see them. Stop them when you see them. Choose the right path. You have a right to that. Choose what? The right path. It is your choice. Choose the right path. A lot of uh, teachings in the Word Religious teachers, I don't teach that. Religious teachers always tell us to be content. Always have this emotion. Be content with what you have. But what we never ask them is why? Why? Are you telling me to be content because you think I may not get what I want to get? And if I don't get it, I'll be broken? Why should I be content? They say God wants you to be content. Which I don't believe. In the same world, there are successful people, rich people. One man with riches of, a, more, of more than a million people in the world. One man. Then you who was nothing, you are told, be content. But you don't have. You're going in with words. That's Manchester. Manchester. You see that, right? <laughs> You be content with what? Because you don't have in the first place what do you call it? Malicious speech, right? <laughs> to set the content, right? Yes. So listen to me. Refuse to be content. Display a discontent. Always I teach this. Every time I have something with me, every time I have money, I feel like I have nothing. Every time I receive enough, I say, what is this? What is this? I do appreciate, but I'm wondering, what is this? Let's work more. That's how we should be. Let's work more. Okay? Never feel, never feel what you have is enough. There is nothing. There are no such things as enough for a person. Let me tell you, no matter how many times they're going to tell you to be content, no human being will ever be content. Not even the teachers who teach about it. And most of those who teach about and say be content, you will find them using planes every time they're going somewhere. You find them having expensive cars, Rolls Royce. You find them driving Mercedes. You find them rich, but they tell others be content. He saw his neighbor having one wife and two kids and two bedrooms. And he feels, if I have that, that's enough. You haven't seen a man living alone in a five-bedroom house and with, a, with a floor on top, two bedrooms on top. One man, young, 22 years old. All you saw was your dad having a lot of kids in two-bedroom house. <laughs> so now, you have taken up that ministry. You say, my life should be simple like this. You see that? Now that's wrong. That's, very, that's not what your father needs for you. He wants you to do something different. Go do it. 
Go do it. Make money in euro. Make money in pounds. Make money in dollars. Have a right mindset. How can you be 18, 20, 25, no passport at all? One day I'll travel. Start with getting a passport. You don't have a passport. You want to change the world. How are you going to do it? You want to change your life. How are you going to do it? You are afraid to get to the airport. You are afraid to go to Dubai. You are afraid. I'm serious. Just going to Canada, you are afraid. Yet nothing is standing in front of you. Nothing. You just heard someone with, a, with a, another terrible wrong ministry who told you going to America is hard. Oh, going to Canada is hard. You've never tried it. You just tell everybody also, you carry the same attitude. Oh, going to America is hard. You re echo the same thing. And the person you tell also will re echo the same thing. Going to America is hard. You just keep going with false information around the streets. And then we say, oh, Canada is not your country. Your country is down there in Africa. Who said? Who said that Canada is not my country? Who said? Because from the way I see things, it is people like myself who put the borders. God didn't put any border anywhere. It is people. So I come into this world, a fresh child, I'm growing up, and I'm seeing the mistakes made by people because of greed. And I find out, what does it take to get there? You say, no, there are rules, regulations. Okay, I will fight. It will take two years to fight my way to get the papers to get there, I will. That's my city. I told one lady, I was, uh, her name is Lydia, I was, sorry I mentioned your name, I was going to uh, uh, Kenya. So I was working in Kenya, opening a business, all right, in another country. By the way, I'm loaded. So I was going there, and then I, this lady tells me, are you going to make it here? She said, there are so many things. And I said to her, the streets of Nairobi and this city is mine. She said, what did you say? I said, the streets of this town, it's mine. Now why I say that was just to give her a picture of how I think. Because they are my brothers. They are my sisters. They have ears, they have good mouth, they have good hands, like myself. Doesn't matter how light your skin is, I don't care. If yours is too white, mine is stronger than yours. That's one thing I know. So if I come into your country, I'm in the United States, I just see you as I am. You can have an idea and say, I belong here, I was born here. You we're all born in the world. <laughs> you see that? We're all born in the world. But different areas. It's a fact. So to tell me, get out of my country, no, I'm not going anywhere. Do you understand that? Many of you have been to Dubai, have traveled different countries. Go there. Stay there. Don't even come back. Stay right there. <laughs> yes, stay with them right there. If the economy in Dubai is better, stay in Dubai right there. And make it right there. Don't say, no, I'm leaving. No, stay right there. Because you heard that the economy is better than the country you're coming from. You will stay in Dubai right there with them. Because of most of the monies that these people make in, the, in Europe are the, these countries, the UAE, coming from Africa. Stay right there, stay with them. Work with them. No one will chase you. No one will give himself a job. Say, I've employed myself, my job is just to chase you. Who's going to do that? It's your fears. That's your greatest enemy. Your greatest enemy is what? Your fear. Don't be afraid. Be bold. Be strong. You understand? These things around us must not change us. Be careful with the ministries around us. Choose a positive ministry. Choose prosperity. You understand? And you find a lot of people commit suicide because they feel like, I'm stuck here. I can't move forward. I got a problem. I can't do this. And because of that, they take their lives. Terrible ministries. A man lived in one sick, poor area. 
he killed his wife, killed his child, and killed himself. Yet you're poor. Coming from that area. A mental problem. Terrible ministries. Be very careful. These things around you. Very careful. Things around you. Be, be selective. Learn to choose. You see this kind of, I don't want this kind of thing. Uh, how much is this? They tell you, oh, this is cheaper, you can buy it. You, uh, is it Chinese or what? what is it original? What? They say it's fake. Oh, no, I don't take fake things. Everything you're doing must have an, a life added to it. Everything must be expensive. They must have life added to those things. That's your quality. Keep it. Don't lose your quality. Don't ignore your quality. Don't reject it. You say, how do you get quality? Create it in your mind. It's in your mind. Just create it. I'm this kind of a man. No more this kind of a man. That's it. From this day forward, I'm like this. I'm not like that. Who's going to come back and say, no, 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 that's not who you are? No one. You understand? You can, if you want to, you can change how you speak English. Who cares? You have chosen the way. If you want to, stop speaking English. It's not your language. Speak your local language. That's fine. That's what you like. Keep it. Be nice like that. After all, it's about your life and your purpose on earth. You must be productive as a person. As you go home today, I want you to remember, as you log out today, remember, there's no person, no woman or man in the world that ever lived like yourself. You're the only person. And because your life is short, and because your life, only you has it. Choose what you want to do with it yourself. It should be your choice. Do you understand? It should be your choice. Never give up. Never quit because of what others have done. Look at the inventors of um, aircrafts, choppers. In our days, our generation, we just take advantage of what has already been made. We don't make anything new in this world. We just take advantage. And the governments of the world today are in competition with their own people. Their own government. So much in competition with their own people. The educational system in the world is a scam. You find a country opens a regulation in the same country, not to help the country, to victimize the private sectors because you are afraid. You and your government, you opened an institution to victimize your own people who are becoming stronger than yourself. That's what people do in many nations today. I'll give an example of the higher education authorities of countries. There are countries I can mention names here who was also a mind of a criminal. And the whole country, the whole government was a mind of, of criminals. A cartel, the entire government officials. They open an institution and say, this institution is going to fight this. Now, if you've seen that your own people in the country are advancing, then you, as a government, call them. Let's work together. Show me, show us, and pay them if you have to. Government, they don't call upon people. They can see that private institution is doing well. They know this. All you will do is copy and make it your own. Check your websites. I'm talking to you. Check your websites. You are using common twerk to live chat support on a government website, which is free, which you are using in your country. You know, I know the person I'm talking about, the country I'm talking about. All right? You are using it. You didn't program it, you didn't code it, you just borrowed it, just got it for free. Now, let me tell you, you get a program which you didn't buy for free. Put it on a government site. Okay, it's, it's helping you on the live chat support. By doing so, as a programmer, I'll tell you, I have access to everything you are doing because that program, I gave it to you for free. Now that you're using it for free, I have all the rights to break into your systems and check everything. See that? You're using that. To show the, we, we can see it from here, how dumb you are. That you're, as a government, you are getting 
things made by boys. Children, you are using them on your websites as a government. And then you come to us, we are the authorities. It's your hour and your time. You understand? World class education many years ago started training online. Many, many years ago, before the COVID came into play. Many governments didn't see that, but we did. Many governments never saw that. We were training online all the years, all these years. And we went to some government institutions and introduced the online training and told them. They said openly, we know nothing about that. But they never said, show us, let's work together. No. After COVID came in, they were champions of online. We now we know how to do this thing. Now we can do Why don't you call those who, who came to you before many years ago? Why don't you do that? They can show you. They can teach you because they've been in it for many years. You just heard about it. You are moved because of problems. Terrible governments. Terrible institutions. There are countries that you're not proud to belong to. Because of crime. You hurt people. You make rules that are hurtful to mankind as a government. Look at Nigeria. Nigeria is a great nation. A very great nation in Africa. Nigeria. Most of Nigerians have doctorates and master's degree, degrees. Young men, 25 years old. And I tell you something. Nigeria, they teach. They've got the best lecturers, the best doctors. In Nigeria, go to other small, small countries in Africa. You will see how that they are criminals. The people in charge of the higher education authority are just thieves and criminals. They take money from the public, telling them we're going to give you accreditation, eat the money, and they don't go back to those people. You take about a lot of money, $500 to $1,000, non-refundable monies. That's their job, just to make money. And then as a cartel, you, as you, you have a cartel, your group, you say, this one and this one will belong to that university. You, you have got shares in that university. That one shares in that university. You have interest in some universities. No wonder you give them accreditation. No wonder you go there. We know all these things. We have intel. You will proceed no further. Because the time is coming. You understand? You will proceed no further. Anyone who's doing something wrong, if the people of the country are not in support of it, you are judged already. You will proceed no further. You have opened schools. I'm talking about government officials who work for higher education authorities have opened schools. They work inside there. They have opened schools, taken the schools in some areas and give themselves accreditation. That's wickedness. You are against the private sector, yet the entire government, the entire country survives on private institutions. We all know that private universities do better jobs than government institutions. We all know that. You've come up with a structure whereby you stop employing people who go to private schools. You now employ people who go to government schools. What's wrong with you? That's a problem. A lot of nurses have graduated, a lot of nurses have graduated from private institutions. On top of their classes, they've been doing great with enough knowledge, they've done their best. You, the, as a government, when you were employing people, the government with government funds, people's money, you chose government schools. Isn't that competition? You chose 2,000 from this university belonging to the government. You chose 100 from private institutions. Isn't that competition? And now, the public, they are afraid to go to a private school. They want to go to a government school. Yet, you can't even afford them. If they choose to come to you, you have no space. That is wrong. You want to enrich yourselves, you, right there. We are doing something about this. We're not going to let you. We are doing something about this. And it's just a matter of time before you're out of office, a matter of time. We know. And the good thing is that most of us that know are educated people. So we know what you're doing. 
How can you go into competition with your own people? That's a shame. And now, what's left of the private schools is to reduce their prices so that they can take as much as they can. So that when people feel like going to a government it's expensive, I'll just go to this one. Yet the knowledge that we give in the private sector is better than what you give. You have bad tutors, bad lecturers. You have criminals who are teachers, who claim that they are teachers. They have fake degrees. They're the ones that, that teach. What, what can someone with a fake degree teach others? It's a lesson to you. I thought I should stress it because this has been a problem in many governments in Africa, especially in Africa and Europe. However, when we talk about the United Kingdom, I have not seen it. In the United Kingdom, they have, people know already that a private institution is better than a government institution. And they go. They go to private. And they are allowed to do so. They are allowed to do so. Thank you so much. I want to thank you for joining me today. And join me again as I bring you more episodes. Until then, keep living. Thank you.